Yeah, hello, Facebook. It's Reed from ReadAboutSex.com, creator of Sex Geek Summer Camp. And I'm with a Sex Geek Summer Camp alumni today, Hi. ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Hunter Riley. Hello. Self serve toys in Albuquerque. And the reason we're not walking is it's Albuquerque. It's friggin' hot here, and we would melt. So we're sitting in the shade in the backyard, and uh, you manage self serve toys. Yes, I am one of the managers at Self Serve Toys. We now have two managers, which is really exciting. Um, and I do a lot of the education and outreach at Self Serve. Mm -hmm. So I plan all of our classes, and I make sure that we have new people coming into the store all the time. And um, I do a lot of outreach with medical professionals and health care providers mm -hmm. to help them be better sex positive doctors and providers and um, not shame their patients. So mm -hmm. I, I kind of get folks coming into the store and then also do a lot of the education at the store. Got it. And, um, and as you're signing on, if you're a sex educator or a uh, sex educator wannabe or some sort of sex positive professional, um, leave a comment. Like, where are you watching from? Uh, what kind of sex education do you do? Uh, and what kind of, um, I mean, you manage a store, and mm -hmm. we were talking about, I'm teaching tonight. Yes. Uh, and you're teaching tomorrow night. Yes. You're teaching a blowjob workshop. I am. I'm teaching rough sex for nice folks. Um, and I'm actually staying the next day so I can finally see you teach. I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, so what I want to talk about for folks, because I just got back from Denver. Uh, I was at the El Dorado Trading Company's Elevation event, which was a training event for um, store owners, for, for retail store owners who own adult boutiques um, or franchises and things like that. And the thing that a lot of people asked me about was how, you know, like, we'd love to bring you to the store, but how do we do that? And what I realized was a lot of, there's a ton of adult stores out there that have never brought in educators and had never even run workshops in-house. Right. So I remember when I was, was a, a wee laddie laddie sex geek, and I reached out to, um, to you all and I was like, can yeah. I come teach <laughs> in your store, please? Um, you guys were great in, in connecting with you and just kind of um, corresponding with you about how you run your workshops was really great. So I thought right. we would have Hunter share um, some of the ins and outs of how they run workshops at their store yeah. because that might be useful, one, for, for adult uh, boutique owners or people who are looking to open up a brick and mortar store. And um, it might be also interesting for educators to, to listen to how the store, or this one particular store, does their thing. So, mm -hmm. ladies and gentlemen, Hunter Riley, go! Thank you. Answer all the questions. Um, okay, so as far as on the side of setting it up, I think there's a couple things that people, it, it would do you good to know these things before you get into it. Mm -hmm. And one is do a little bit of market research. Ask your customers what they want to know about. All the time I get really excited for a class idea, and then no one shows up, you know? So just because I'm excited about it and just because someone wants uh -huh. to teach it doesn't mean people want to learn about it. Got it. And can you give us an example of, <laughs> of a class that failed oh, miserably? Oh, gosh, yeah. Okay. There was one. I mean, so, like, I think a lot of it is, is how you title stuff, mm -hmm. you know? So um, we have a teacher who is really into teaching um, erotic hypnosis. And the first time we did the class, no one signed up. Mm -hmm. And now we kind of tried it again, and I think we tweaked the title a little bit. And now we're, we're getting more people to sign okay. up. But it's, it's an example of something, be, people being yeah. like, what the hell is erotic hypnosis? It sounds scary. Yeah. You know, so we actually had to do a little bit more tweaking with the title okay. and with and, the description. And the copy, yeah. And the copy, okay. right. So, so we changed that up a little bit. Um, and then also, you know, sometimes you think, oh, well, you know, like, we're always really bummed that the blowjob class generally does pretty well, but our cunnilingus class is hard to put on sometimes. Like, sometimes people don't sign up for that class. It takes longer to get people to come. Ah! Well, and it's it's a trend in the adult <laughs> industry, too. There's lots of places where, like, we joke, we're the feminist sex shop that pays our bills with the blowjob class, right? And so that, like, doesn't feel good on the Got inside. It. So what, one thing that we did, um, Mady, the store owner, she started teaching a G-spot class, mm -hmm. right? And, and putting orgasm in the title, you know, things like that, of making it, you kind of want to make it sound sexy, you know, make it sound fun. Um, and, you know, cunnilingus is this kind of medical term. People are like, what is that? You yeah, know? it's a great Scrabble word, though. <laughs> it is a great Scrabble word. You get lots of points for that. Um, so really looking at, at your customer base and, and what they want. And on a regular basis, I try and connect with customers and with other instructors and ask them, what do you want to teach? Mm -hmm. And what, what classes do you want to attend as, as an attendee? Okay. Um, and we put out survey monkeys to have people give us ideas. Um, so really knowing that what we're offering is what people actually want. 
um, I think that's a really good point because it's easy to get super excited about something and go forward with yeah. it, and then uh, people are like, oh, no, no thanks. And I could see where, like, if there was a manager of a store who convinced their boss finally to have a class right. and then went to all the trouble and then nobody showed up, then the owner might be like, well, see, you know, I told you no one would show up to classes, and then they never, the owner decides to never run a class again. Right, and, and the other thing, too, is that you have to, you're dealing with people where they're at, and oftentimes the idea of going to a sex shop to learn about sex and relationships with a bunch of strangers is terrifying for mm -hmm. some people. So you really have to understand that people oftentimes are feeling a little bit nervous to go in, mm -hmm. and so how do you, how do you, draw them in in a way that helps them feel comfortable mm -hmm. and then how do you blow their minds while they're there so that then they come back and yep. they tell their friends yep. and that's that's our one of our best forms of marketing is word of mouth yep. because people come to a class and they're scared and they're nervous and, and we work tell all their friends they, and, well yeah exactly they're scared they're nervous and then we work really hard to like relax them a little bit and break the ice and let them know they're safe and comfortable and then they have an amazing time and they tell all their friends mm -hmm. and I, I've had somebody come back to my class with her friends four different times and she says, you know, I learn something new every time. And I'm yeah. like, that's awesome. That's like, I'm so glad to hear that because the fact that you're coming back to this class and bringing your friends means that this is valuable to you, yeah. you know? So I think, I think that's a big thing, too, is, is knowing that sometimes you really have to do a lot of work to get people just in the door. Mm -hmm. And then when they're in the door, you have to make sure that you give them an experience that really rocks their world and helps them feel safe and comfortable and seen and heard. And... Um, and they don't feel like they're going to some like sketchy place where like are they gonna have sex there? Are they gonna touch me there? Yeah. That's really important for people to know that no sex or touching happens at our classes um, because that would be against the law. And so we just try really hard to make sure that that's really clear so people know what they're walking into and they feel comfortable walking mm -hmm. in. Yeah, you can also on the on the Survey Monkey survey if I mean, do you did you have a lot of customers fill it out? We did. We had almost a hundred uh, responses. Really? Yep. Holy crap! Mm -hmm. um, one of the things you can do in the survey. And, and try to keep your surveys short, yeah. like don't make them huge, like uh, if they can take two to five minutes, that really helps because, and then people, you train people to, that your surveys don't take a long time, because people who love filling out surveys, and you, it's quick and it's easy, they'll, you can almost always depend on them. Um, the thing you can do is you can also ask folks what their concerns are. Right. Because those concerns you can address in the bullet points and in the copy of your workshops. Like one, right. like you have somebody today who asked, I think, if I'm remembering correctly, you know, if it was going to be interactive or something like that. Or right. you asked me. Right, that. yeah, I asked, yeah, exactly. Um, and so, like, with my Rough Sex for Nice folks, I'll be doing some demos, and, and I'd love to use you if you're, you're available. I'm there. Um, but the it says in the description that the actual participants won't be doing anything. And that that they're just going to be sitting there and taking notes might be the thing that makes mm -hmm. a beginner feel safe enough to come in. Right. Um, because they don't have to do anything and they won't be partnering with a stranger or something like that. Right, exactly. What, um, from a, a manager perspective, what are some of the things you guys learned running workshops at the school? Um, a big thing that we learned is um, how to incentivize people to buy tickets early. Because mm -hmm. we were having a problem where we would cancel a class because we had one or two signups, and then we'd have four people show up at the door Got it. after we canceled it. And that was really a bummer, so we were canceling lots of classes, and then we decided um, through a lovely friend of mine, Sarah Azizi, who's a sex educator and kink educator Sarah. here. She's amazing! She was like, y'all should just do early bird pricing, and I was like, oh my god! So now we have a certain number of early bird tickets mm -hmm. where they get five bucks off if they sign up up to two days before the event. Okay. Right, and so that actually got people signing up more. So now we're canceling fewer classes. And is that number of tickets enough to to make sure that you're going to do the class no matter exactly, what? Exactly, exactly. So so we very specifically picked that number based on the breakdown for paying our instructors because we think it's like pay your instructors, right? Mm -hmm. um, don't accept people to work for free. It really it really sets up an unfortunate sort of you know dynamic if you're expecting people to work and not pay them. Mm -hmm. So we you know we made sure that we're taking care of our instructors. And um, then also making sure that it's, it's you know, viable for us to have this because we have to have a staffer there. Someone has to stay afterwards and, and do sales and things like that. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we can, you know, it's not a loss to do these classes. Okay. And, and honestly, for a little while, it kind of was. And we were considering not doing classes. And then I asked if I could take on the process because it felt like it was a really important part of what self-serve offers. And it was a really important part of our mission. And that if we could tweak the system a little bit to get it to be more profitable, that that would be better. And, and even still, it's not an incredible profit, but it's it's better now than it ever has been. Mm -hmm. And we have, like, years of data in spreadsheets 
the amazing store manager, um, Dede, she's compiled data in like graphs and charts and it's so sexy. hot. It's so like, sexy. I'm the, her brain just makes me like so happy. And so we actually have um, two to three years of data on how our classes have been going, mm -hmm. bro um, broken down by class, broken down by instructor. Um, so we're, we're going to be finding a way to compile that and deliver it to the people soon okay. because it's pretty, it's very interesting to see that like, you know what? September for us historically has been a shit month for classes. So maybe, and we're, so maybe we're actually gonna we're gonna take September off this year, Got it. Got it. <laughs> right? So it sucks when you have five classes and we in last September, we literally canceled every single class that month. Wow. You know, and that okay. and and again, it's not exactly the same every year, but we can see the sort of dips in. Well, if and, you're gonna, you're gonna take take summer a summer right. vacation exactly. for classes, then it then the data is showing September. Right. Exactly. What um what's your busiest month or the month you can always count on for classes? Um, typically January, February, and March do really well for us, um, and I think, and, and also November, but it really, it's the biggest thing for us, our, our biggest trends actually follow when instructors come in from out of town, and, it, and you have a following, so when Tristan Termino comes in, when you come in, um, there's other folks who come in, and, and, and it, they get people really excited to come to the class, mm -hmm. right, and, and so that's, that's always really helpful for us, because we have an influx of people come to a class, and we have you know, 30 people sometimes in a class, and those big spikes really help our year even out a little bit yeah. more. But oftentimes January, February, March do pretty well. I, I like to think people are like making New Year's resolutions or something to mm. like have better sex and learn sure. more. Um, I don't know if that's true. Valentine's Day also. But um, that, those are some, some good times for us. It's beginning of the year and then also like October, November. Mm -hmm. So for, for, those, for you educators out there who are looking to maybe teach at stores, again, like the... the ideas that we talk about at camp, which is like, how do you build a following? How do you educate them and get them to get to know you? Maybe through video, could be blog posts, could be podcast appearances. Like, how do you build a following so that when you roll into town, you know, you can post on your social media and you have people in Albuquerque or people who live in other parts of the country who have friends in Albuquerque right. and say, hey, you know, Reed Mahalko is going to be in town. He's hilarious and he's awesome go to that class um, and so like as an educator the more that you can build a fan f base um, the more valuable you are to other to stores and mm -hmm. things like that and then for me like this is also an excuse to come and hang out with you all right. um, so as I'm flying back from Denver I kind of skip to Albuquerque uh, make a detour teach for a class hang out for a little bit get some work done and then you know keep going so you know maybe we'll do another video uh another day about like just how to think about as an educator you know doing store appearances um but as a manager and also as as your somebody who teaches workshops mm -hmm. as well um what advice would you have for other managers and store owners about either having staff teach classes mm -hmm. or um or maybe even like reaching out to somebody like Tristan Terramino like how do how does that work and how do you figure out right. you know split of the door or is it a flat fee right. like what are your thoughts so um, what we've done is we've created a whole application process for teachers um, because that you know unfortunately the, the reality is that a lot of people are like I want to teach at your store and we're like cool and then we never I've hear never back. I've never taught a workshop right, right, before. Right, exactly. So we actually need to make sure, like, if, if we're putting our name on it and, yeah. we're, and we're inviting people into the space to say this is going to be a good place for you to be and you're going to learn good content here, we have to know that that's true, right? And so we actually have an application process. And part of that is, like, if I make you fill out an application and you actually do fill out the application and send it back to me, great, you've passed the first, you know, quote-unquote test. <laughs> yeah, first exactly, you you've jumped jump through the first hoop to let me know that you can say I'm interested in something and I have follow-through and I do it. Mm -hmm. So we have an application process, but we also get approached a lot by teachers, you know, like you or Tristan or someone else who come in and say, hey, I'm going to be in the area, can I do a class? Um, and and basically we, we do kind of, th the way that we do break um, I, I, I think I filled out an application once. Yeah, I, 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 I send it to everybody, you yeah. know, and I send it to everybody. And if I've seen you teach before, you know, I might be like, okay, cool, this is, you know, I want you to read over the application so you know what we expect mm -hmm. of you, but I also know that, like, you're going to fit that and you're going to do a Got good it. job. Um, but um, So another reason to go and teach at conferences and things yeah. like that, if you can afford it, or if there's a conference uh, or a situation in appearance mm -hmm. or, like, a telesummit or something like that, you know, things where as an educator you might come across yeah. Hunter's radar or some, mm -hmm. some other manager's radar so that you're a known entity. Right. Well, and also, um, you know,
putting yourself out there and having promotion material is so helpful. So when you come, I know that I can prom I can promo your YouTube page and I can post videos because you have that, and so people can get a glimpse of your teaching style mm -hmm. and know if that's going to be fun for them, right? And so it's, sometimes it's hard when someone doesn't have anything we can promo with. Mm -hmm. So if you can get little clips or examples of you teaching, and then that that helps me feel more secure in knowing that I'm going to be bringing someone who knows what they're talking about and who will do a good job of keeping our audience and our attendees. You know, comfortable and feeling seen and heard. So I guess from 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 the manager store owner perspective, if there's somebody who wants to come teach at your store <clears throat> and they don't have any social media presence, there's no YouTube videos, there's nothing but a clever title mm -hmm. um, and an email to you. You might want. They might not be. They might be great, mm -hmm. but they might not quite be legitimate. Air quotes enough. To, or ready to, to teach at your store, and they might not have a following that they can also bring into your store. Right. Um, so, you know, pay attention to the things that Hunter's saying around how do you vet educators um, to know if they're going to be a good fit for your store. Mm -hmm. uh, what else? Um, gosh. What about I mean, mistakes? What mistakes did you guys make if you want to share? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I think a big mistake that we made was... Besides letting me come to your town. <laughs> that was number one on my list. Um, no, I'd say, you know, the biggest mistake I think we made was not figuring out a way to incentivize pre-sale tickets, because mm -hmm. um, that meant that we were canceling so many classes. Mm -hmm. um, and then another big thing is just really, like, titling your classes, right? Because, it, you know, you really need to get somebody in in that very first moment, and, um, and sometimes it's really easy to get excited about these sort of theoretical ideas for classes of, like... I mean, I don't know, there's, there, there's so many examples yeah. of amazing classes that I want to have, mm -hmm. but the title just doesn't quite work and it doesn't draw people in. So I would say really having a really awesome title that, you know, you can just see the title and be interested, mm -hmm. right? And, and know what it is that, that's being talked about, too. Is that the air conditioning? Yes, it Something's is. Something's making noise. Um, so just real quick on titles, there's two really easy ways to think about titles. One is uh, something snazzy and catchy and fun um, that solves a problem, right? So for me, it's right. rough sex for nice folks. Uh, catchy, kind of tells you what it's about, and the problem that's not clearly, clearly stated, which is nice folks, uh, how, do I, how do I have rough sex if my lover wants rough sex? Right. The other thing you can do, which works really well for some audiences, is, you know, common mistakes of mm -hmm. blank. So like, you know, common blowjob mistakes, the workshop, or right. common whatever mistakes. Uh, people resonate with mistakes really well, um, so when in doubt, like kind of kick those ideas around, right. um, and make sure you're using words that your audience uses. Yeah. You know, heteronormativity is a word that is only used by sex educators and scholars. <laughs> um, it is not what you know most people, most customers are right. like. Honey, if we were just less heteronormative, right, exactly. our relationship and our sex lives would be better. So, you know, don't, you know, don't title your, your workshop The Three Common Mistakes of Heteronormative Relationships. <laughs> no one will show up. Right. Well, so exactly. Using the language that your, that your audience and your customers are using is really important because sometimes they might, that might actually be the best workshop for them, mm -hmm. and they don't know it. Yeah. Um, another big thing is, like, I, I really want to do, like, communication workshops and safer sex workshops, but... You know what, I'll be honest, I've tried them and not a lot of people show up. Mm -hmm. So instead what we do is we just actually weave, you know, consent, communication, and safer sex through every single workshop, yeah. right? And so as much as, as, much as those, those topics are really important, not, a lot of people feel like, I don't need, to, I don't need the safer sex mm -hmm. one, I already know it. Or I don't need the communication yeah. one, I already know it. Yeah. And, that's, and whether or not that's true, you know, whatever, it's just actually nice to... To have that be a mainstay for all yeah. of, of your it. classes, yeah, it, it has it. to be there, and then it normalizes it as you don't need it a separate class for consent. It's no consent is always talked about, mm -hmm. always and forever throughout all of our classes. Yeah. And then, last but not least, show us the money. How how do you think about or like what are some of the ways that you tried or figured out how you're going to pay people, and then also how do you take advantage of the workshop to make more money at the store? Right, so um, we, the way that we do our pay structure is the more people that show up to the class, the more money that the instructors and us make. And then sometimes we do 50-50 splits with touring instructors, mm -hmm. too. Um, so it just kind of depends on what's going on. But um, basically we have instructors who, make, who sell out their classes and who make a decent amount of money with us every month because they have people coming back. 
and one of our teachers, Stan Alexander, he does a really good job because he uh, does a lot of kink education, right? And so he does, what, why his classes are popular is because there's a lot of hands-on, and so you're going to the rope class and you're sitting down with your partner on the floor and you're tying rope. Got it. Right? And so what he's, what he's told me is that that, his self-serve classes funnel people into his Other kink, classes. yeah, his, yeah. His, 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 like, kink stuff, yeah. you know, and he does, he does munches and, and um, different parties, so what he's told me is that he gets people all the time who come to a self-serve class, and then, get on his email list, and then buy other things. Right, and then buy other things or come to other events. So it's a really good way to let people see what you do and then have, have them find you other uh, in other places. Mm-hmm. And that's, I think, continue really popular. Edu- find you as a teacher and then continue their education in right. the other courses and offerings that you offer. Right. Um, and then how do you take advantage, or, or how do you set ticket prices? Like, how did you figure out mm-hmm. what works best for ticket prices? Yeah, and that's, that's hard because, um, you know, I, I think we are pushing the limit for what Albuquerque is willing to pay mm-hmm. for a sex ed yeah. class. Every town's different. Every town's Every town different. is different. And that's a big thing, too. Telling, you know, letting, letting marketer um, or teachers know what your demographic is, right? So Albuquerque is interesting because it's, like, oddly conservative in a lot of ways, and so that's why I think a lot of people are kind of like, oh, going to the sex class, what? But then we also have a beautiful, you know, like, sort of queer alt scene here that, mm-hmm. that, that really is, is the bulk of, of who comes to our classes, but now it's starting to even out a little bit more. And so now we have a little bit of a more, like, you know, mainstream audience coming to our classes, sure. and that's actually really good. Yeah. So, And you're also not, you know, San Jose or right. Silicon Valley, so you, you don't have people necessarily here making six-figure salaries. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, and this, so for us, our ticket prices range from 15 to $20 a person. Mm-hmm. And, and what I'll tell you is that a lot of people feel that that is very expensive before they come to the class, and then when they're in the class and they're like, all right, it was worth it. It was worth every single penny. And so it, it's a common thing. People are like, oh, that sounds like a lot of money. I don't know. I don't know if I want to pay that. And then, like I said, they end up coming to the class four times. And we have people who come to every single class we have if they can make it. And yeah. we have, like, a little punch card, you know? So if you come to nine classes, you get the tenth class free. Cool. So <laughs> incentivizing and kind of encouraging people to come back. Uh, and then how about making money... How do you leverage it for actually like selling merchandise and stuff mm. like that? I right. Guess. So yeah. So so we, we try and make sure that you know people are at least aware of what products we have that might fit into their class. We don't want you know we don't want instructors to be pushy and to be you know too salesy if if, if they like if it's not natural don't do it. But the likelihood is that there's probably several things we sell at our at our store that would literally and legitimately help the people who are in your mm-hmm. class. Yeah. Right. So for me, I'm lucky for my blowjob class like. Toys are amazing because they do make blowjobs easier and, and more exciting, and cock rings can help people last longer and uh, maintain erections, right? So all of those things fit in really, really well to a blowjob class. So I just make sure to actually, and honestly, people come to the sex toy shop to learn about sex toys. Yeah. And, and sometimes I get the feedback from participants saying, I wish they would have focused more on sex toys because I, I still have questions. Got it. So it's one of those things where people are generally curious about that, and if you can find ways to weave that into your presentation, mm-hmm. not only is the store going to love you because you're helping them with sales, yep. and they're going to want you to come back because after after the class, you know, we always do a 10% discount. So if you come to a class, you get 10% off your purchase that night for, bring, for being brave and coming out to the class. Like a reward. Right, exactly, and saying you're awesome and brave and you're, you're doing this, and so here's 10% off if you want to do any shopping mm-hmm. tonight. Got it. All right, well, I think this video is long enough. Um, I want to thank you, Hunter for uh, a gracing, guest starring in today's Facebook Live video. Um, leave some comments. Leave your questions. Uh, share this video with a fellow sex educator or somebody, manager or owner uh, of a retail store uh, that caters to um, intimacy, sexuality, relationships. I mean, it doesn't have to be a sex toy store, but yeah. it could be um, a health and wellness uh, situation, like any kind of retail or brick and mortar situation where they might want to bring in teachers and maybe they haven't. Or maybe they're trying and failing miserably because they're making the same mistakes that, uh, that self-serve ran into when, uh, when we often reinvent the wheel. Right. So hopefully this information was, uh, will save some people some, uh, you know, some grief and have people be more successful and more awesome and, and then we'll spread the pleasure and the excitement and the world will just be a better place. Yes. Hopefully. Any, uh, and where can people find you all? Yes, yeah, so if you want to visit our shop, we have, oh, and we have online classes, by mm-hmm. the way. We have a blowjob class online. Um, so if you want to see me put my mouth on a dildo, that's, that's the way to do it. 
Um, so you can find us at selfservetoys.com. Um, and if you want to talk to me specifically about classes or if you want to apply to be an instructor at SelfServe, um, you can email me just hunter, H-U-N-T-E-R, at selfservetoys.com, and I would love to hear from you. All right. Check it out. And for those of you who are waiting to register for camp, we're like 69, 68 days out from Wait, camp. 69 days? Yeah, I think so. It's, or it's 68. Maybe it just turned to 68 days out. So go to readaboutsex.com forward slash camp, F-A-Q, and, uh, and check, out, uh, check out why you're not coming to camp. This is silly. Is, you want to say anything about camp? Camp is awesome. I just couldn't. I've, I've been every single year that it has happened, and I have learned, you know, I have gone every year and have, Heard a lot of the same content and learned a lot of different things every single time. Um, the people there are incredible. I've met I've met people who have had come teach at Self Serve mm -hmm. at camp. The connections for you know fellow educators is just impeccable, and it's also a really interesting and different experience than other sort of cons because um, you're out in the middle of beautiful, beautiful West Virginia, and you actually get a chance to unplug in a way that, for me, is very, very valuable. Pick a tree, make yeah. a s'mores, go skinny dipping, <laughs> you know the things. Yep. Um, all right, that's it. Hit some emoticons on the way out so that Hunter feels the love all the way here from wherever you are today to <laughs> Albuquerque, New Mexico. And tonight is Rough Sex for Nice Folks, and tomorrow night is your blowjob workshop. It what's, is. what's it called? Mastering the Blowjob, Interactive Skills. Interactive Cause, Skills. Because we use dildos. Whoa. Sterilized dildos. Sterilized oh, yeah. dildos. Oh, yeah. Everybody? Everybody. If you want to. You don't have to, but I love it because I've only had like one or two people not do it. So most of the time you get a whole room full of people Sucking on some dills together, laughing, giggling, having a good time. I make it. I, I try and make it fun. There's. I. You will definitely can see me. Can I bring me. my own dildo? If you want to. I don't yes. have to use yours. It's. You can bring your own dildo. Excellent. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Cool. Bye, everyone. Look, bye. Up, look at all that love. Look at all that love. Look at love. that love. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs>